Well, I wanted to talk to you today about um, five generations of ruling households. So this is just sort of something I've been thinking through, and I decided to write a little piece for um, the introduction of my upcoming book, uh, the, the Ruling Household, because I, 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 figure, I, I really feel like uh, this, the Genesis 128 mandate to be fruitful, multiply, fill, subdue, and rule, I think for a lot of people is still way too abstract. Those are, those are really powerful words. They're action verbs. But I think that each of them, how that works in the context of a family, you even want to hear theologians talk about this. They call it the cultural mandate. And they're constantly talking about fruitful, multiply, fill, subdue, and rule as something almost like an institution does or that happens you know, through the church. And in the whole context, of course, of Genesis 1 is the creation of a family. And so I think that it's really important for us to try to increase the rev resolution and the, and the clarity uh, for what a family that does these five things might look like. And so at the risk of being a little bit too concrete, um, I wanted to just articulate a potential case study for how it might feel, what, what it might look like for um, a family that's like very committed to this mission to do this over five generations, to think about the primary role of maybe Gen 1 is fruitful, Gen 2 is multiply, Gen 3 is fill, Gen 4 is subdue, Gen 5 is rule. Now, you could, of course, do this much faster or much slower, but I think that this kind of was the easiest way for me to illustrate the point in a case study format for what this could look like in a family. So I'm going to read this to you. I'd love to get your take on it. I'm curious if there's anything that like bounces it kind of st st sticks out as well as like a view like correct or you know modify anything about this vision so <clears throat> this is uh called ruling in five generations a case study in order to be as practical as possible and get your imagination going i'm going to walk through some basic steps a family can take to becoming a ruling family by the fifth generation now, this is a thought experiment where we are attempting to imagine the progress five generations could make who take literally the five-step mandate of Genesis 128 to be fruitful, multiply, fill, subdue, and rule. Gen 1, a husband and wife are starting from ground zero. They are committed followers of Jesus and believe that Genesis 128 and Matthew 28, 16 through 20, that's the go and make disciples passage, provide the mission for their family, right? So that's where we're starting. Just a husband and wife who understand the biblical mission of the family to do the Genesis 128 and the Matthew 28 mandate. Um, so they're going to, of course, be focused on one fruitful. Without much support from extended family, they are still able to have five children. With support from their church, they build a healthy household and intentionally train their kids to honor the family mission and follow the Lord. As they enter adulthood, all five of their children are excited to further the family mission and expand the family line. Multiply. The command to multiply is the command to raise your children in a way that maximizes their desire and ability to have children. Fruitfulness is having children, but multiplication is having grandchildren. This family has passed those values down successfully to their children by raising their sons to aspire to be skilled fathers and their daughters to be skilled mothers. In addition, Genesis Gen 1 pursued a lifestyle that allowed them to support their children and having kids early and often. So they're, this mother and father have really designed a lifestyle so that they can be available to help their kids have their grandkids. They helped with down payments on houses, were available to help with childcare and use their skills and network to help their kids start or acquire successful local businesses. So this is a lot of the intense activity of, of Gen 1. All right, generation number two, the five children in this generation and their spouses are aligned with the family vision, and each family had an average of five children. These 25 cousins or grandchildren in the Gen 3 are being raised in a common family culture that is focused on the next phases of the plan to continue multiplying, but especially the mandate to fill. So how are they multiplying? Getting to experience the love and vision from Gen 1, the grandparents, the skilled parenting of Gen 2, the parents, and the beautiful immersive family culture of their 25 cousins these grandchildren and even are even more committed to the vision of multiplying the family. The Gen 1 and Gen 2 adults in the family ensured that their children and grandchildren 
were immune to the family destroying ideologies that were being virally, virally spread within the wider culture. Hmm. So part of what I just wanted to call out there is the command to multiply is under great assault today. And we have what I don't, I think has not been properly diagnosed as multi generational family destroying mental and religious viruses that are infecting the culture in massive um, amounts and are becoming saturated. We're becoming filled and subdued and ruled by family destroying viruses. So mm. obviously one of the things that, that a multiplying family has to do is find a way to make their children and grandchildren immune to these viruses. So um, just want to call that out specifically. All right. So this family, uh, Gen 2 is successfully multiplying. Gen 3 is catching the vision. All right. So this uh, fill, so we're really going to focus on the command to fill that is given as the third command um, in the Genesis 128 blessing. So the fill command is given to this third generation, the cousins of Gen 3, with the support of their parents from Gen 2 and the continued wisdom and vision from their grandparents from Gen 1, begin a local saturation strategy. They buy and build interrelated businesses. They acquire and steward land and houses in similar areas. They start or expand churches and ministries. And the concentrated nature of their efforts begins to make them one of the most influential families in the region. So imagine in your city, you started to see emerge uh, 25 families that were all from, um, that are the third generation from a single descendant family from Gen 1. And they all had the same vision. I mean, this would be a very influential family in the area, especially if they're uh, really focused on this mandate to fill, which is the saturation strategy of a particular region to fill out um, that, um, that area. All right, so what's going on? Generation number three, the 25 cousins in this generation can begin to see the vision of their grandparents playing out in front of them. And so they continue to multiply by having large families that average about five kids per family for a total of 125 Gen 4 children. The Gen 1 great-grandparents get to see many of their great-grandchildren before they pass, and now the grandparents, which are Gen 2, take on the vision-casting roles within the growing clan. So what does filling look like? The 125 kids of Gen 4 grow up seeing the growing mm -hmm. influence of the family and having um, the, the in the region are trained from a young age to purchase, acquire supporting businesses, to especially leverage the family resources, to create an export economy that brings more resources back into the local economy. So one of the things that starts to happen is you have 125 now uh, families that are all really focused on filling and um, acquiring and, and expanding. Uh, you're going to want to begin to make sure that part of your economic strategy is not just like service-based businesses in a local economy. You really need to start to think about how to bring in resources uh, from the more national or global economy. And I think a clan of this size and at this level of skill would be really good at that as well. So in addition to servicing the local economy. All right, subdue. So now we're going to add the fourth sort of dimension of the ruling household. Um, the fourth thing that we're blessed to do is to subdue. The collective economy, economic efforts of the clan have made this family the top employer in the region. Everything this family stewards creates a unique kingdom culture that is blessing hundreds of families that they serve or employ through their businesses. Now, beginning with Gen 1, one of the elements of subdue is discipleship. So beginning with Gen 1, the patriarch and matriarch of this family modeled a disciple-making culture where every year each family member would be discipled for at least half the year and then making disciples of three others during the, other, the rest of the year. So this has been going on now in, in this case study for 75 plus years so 75 plus years into this discipleship culture created by Gen 1 has resulted in thousands of new and multiplying believers in the region. The level of obedience to the Lordship of Jesus is becoming the most remarkable distinctive of this area. People are streaming to the area for conferences and training programs mm -hmm. to learn how this region has been so impacted by the gospel. And that's not you know, hard to imagine. You have 125 fruitful, multiplying, filling and subduing families that have all been trained in a disciple-making culture um, that is that it, that really has trained and expects all the family members to be involved in discipleship on an annual basis. So, man, you're going to have a ton of multiplication if you do that right. So Gen 4, the 125 members of Gen 4, along with their spouses, continue to multiply, fill, and subdue, having an average of five kids per family or 600-plus children in the next generation. 
The influence this family is now having is beginning to receive national attention. The local economy is thriving through this family's skilled efforts. New institutions of education are being established that reflect the values and beliefs of this family. So part of what you would see in this generation, there's so many children, so much multiplying, so much ability to really see where this is headed. You, you would, it would make it pretty easy and also necessary to develop these additional kind of institutions, things like publishing houses and potentially secondary education and um, obviously primary education um, efforts. So that's going to be happening for sure in major uh, ways in Gen 4. <clears throat> All right. So Generation 5, now with over 600 family members and countless thousands of disciples made by this generation of the family, man, many members of this generation are being trained to take roles in governance. The family launches a coordinated campaign to win local elected positions as judgeships, mayoral, city council, and representative positions are being filled by the wisest members of the family. And this really creates what is the fifth and final mandate given to the family in Genesis 128 to rule. So no family in this region has more skin in the game than this ruling household. They have so many local family members with thousands more coming in the next generations, giving them the highest incentive to ensure that policies that are enacted that are wise and will maximize justice, freedom, and flourishing for the coming generations. So these are the kind of people you really want to rule your city, your region, and represent you in, in more national um, and statewide ways. So the purpose of this thought experiment is to demonstrate what is possible through a multi-generational mindset. So much momentum is wasted through a short-sighted single-generational vision. Any family that lives for future generations understands that Genesis 128 blueprint and trains their children to do the same will have an Abrahamic level impact on the future. And that's really what I want to kind of, yeah, get, get people's imaginations going. What could this look like? Because I think oftentimes we're pitched other visions and we don't realize what we're giving up when we um, ignore the Genesis 128 blueprint. Not only are we building households in a way that isn't the way God originally designed them in scripture, but man, we're missing out a lot of fruit, I think.